how exciting is it for you being a comedy based wrestler to see like Taylor comedy based I'm the national champion if Billy Corgan heard you call me a comedy wrestler he'd be pissed off but go on how exciting is it to see you know Taylor Dan St. Germain like all these long punches break you know cross over into wrestling yeah. kind of instead of just being a wrestler that's trying to be funny have you know comedians want to embrace wrestling sure well it's, it's the same thing that I've been doing for the past probably 10 years is trying to, to break into the kind of the comedy scene a little bit and I, I did some training uh, in Chicago uh, at, at comedy sports and I've been doing the Edinburgh Fringe Festival for the past seven years I will be at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival in August August 2nd through the 25th in Scotland every night we're doing a comedy show myself and John Hastings so uh, I, this is something that I've been doing so uh, and, the, and the comedians have embraced me into their world, you know, a lot of them have, especially because so many of them have been wrestling fans that they'll, uh, they'll, they'll be so happy that I want to be involved in the comedy world. So I think it's just finally this, the other way around now where we're letting the comedians in. And I don't see anything wrong with it because um, they're obviously such huge fans. And there's an appreciation of, like, an art. Like, these comedians, you know, Funches and Stan St. Germain and Mike Lawrence and Taylor, uh, they've just, they've been going at it for so long. And as wrestlers, we can appreciate how much time they put into their art. So that's something where, like, as artists, we all kind of appreciate what we're doing. So we welcome, uh, the, we kind of would welcome the comedians or the musicians or the poets or whatever it might be, the athletes uh, into wrestling. As long as they have the, they, you know, have respect for the wrestling. And obviously these guys, they're such huge fans, they obviously have the respect for it. As you mentioned, you are the NWA national champion. Holding that title, knowing... Didn't Zandig do something like this? Okay, I don't know. Something. something like that. Go on. Knowing the history of the title of the promotion, like how important is nostalgia to you as a wrestler or you know, reestablishing the NWA as a brand today? Yeah. Maybe I should show this NWA. Uh, well, if you saw in my podcast, I just did, we just did a live podcast at StarCast, and I had Glacier on, and we used to start talking, and he started talking about his mentors were Luthez, Billy Robinson, and Danny Hodge. And my mind was like blown because there's something so romantic about those three wrestlers in general. We just don't think about them as people because they just have this aura about them. And so uh, that I, I have so much respect for for everybody in wrestling, but especially the past. I really do. And so um, to be with this NWA and how NWA is kind of like we know it's new school, but it's also definitely representing and respecting the past and the traditions of pro wrestling. And so uh, I'm all on board. And so to be able to represent the NWA with the national championship uh, is amazing. And I'm proud to do it. And I'm looking forward to how long and how much I can do with this championship. Uh, and I think that's going to be kind of the cool thing. And then also Dave Lagana, who just does wonderful work uh, editing, and just he's a workhorse. Uh, I look forward to working with him and how we can kind of tell some cool stories and uh, move this NWA into the future while still respecting the past. Dave's done a lot of work, positive work, with 10 pounds of gold. You know, Nick and Billy with his story, the 30 Days stories. Has there any been, uh, has there been any talk about maybe having you doing like a road diary for them? Or yes. Uh, another sort of feature like that to, you know, kind of branch out. Yeah, I would love to do something like that. Right, Ten Pounds of Gold uh, has been so amazing, and I think that's part of the fun of having me with this NWA team. Is is Lagana knows. Uh, how forward thinking I am with the internet, obviously having a podcast since 2010 and having a, you know, a, a comedy YouTube show, uh, creative has nothing for you and, and worst promo ever. And now we're going to start to do some more things, but obviously I understand how the medium works. And so uh, it's just about, they have a lot of work. They're doing a lot of work. I know they're focusing on Nick and he's the champion, but, um, yeah, I definitely want to do some fun stuff moving forward, whether it's a road diaries or even, you know, not putting comedic aspects on it, but, you know, I showing my, my, my charm and my wit, uh, you know, will always, you put a smile on somebody's face and I, I love giving that content and I love I love giving that free content it's that's what's cool to me I love that it's free and anyone can watch it um, and then that's kind of how that business model works is like we'll give you all this free stuff and then hey you know if we do have something you want to support you'll support it and that's what's happened with the, you know the NWA um, especially the uh, the uh, the cup the um, the Crockett, the, the Crockett Cup. I was going to say the, the Conrad Cup the for Conrad some reason. Just on the brain. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, so, you know, it was a great house and there were so many buys and everyone was supporting. So I think that's it's a good model and it's working. Okay. You talked about um, branching over into the comedy aspect of the realms of things. Do you find, now since you've been wrestling for a long time. Since you've been gone. <laughs> have you found out that like uh, 
what are, are you more a little more nerve wracked when you go like kind of venture into the comedy yeah. scene thing than you are in comparison to maybe when you start out with wrestling or is it kind of the same? One I was one? never that you know because I was like I feel I was like born to be a wrestler. <laughs> um, I, it's just I'm obsessed with wrestling since I was a child, and so um, and I, my first couple of matches were under a mask, you know. So that's really gives you the freedom of like not caring what happens to you is because no one knows you're just under a mask, um, and so. Uh, so, so, you know, comedy, I love comedy. I've kind of grown to love comedy, um, but I wasn't obsessed with it as much as I was with wrestling. So uh, it's not just like that natural thing where you can just jump in there and know how, to, you just kind of know how to do a sunset flip and you just know these weird things because you've watched so much wrestling. Um, uh, but yeah, it's comedy for me is, is uh, can be a little nerve wracking and I've gone up in front of like 10 people in Chicago and I'm just like super nervous. And like the week before I was wrestling in front of 5,000 people in Japan and I had no nerves. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's just, uh, it's, it is what it is, but I, 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 I like doing it and I like kind of having like a little side project, you know, like I get what Dolph Ziggler is doing and why he's doing it. It's like, we need a different outlet and we need, you know, something to do that's fun. And, uh, I love wrestling. I love getting out there and wrestling, but uh, you know, so yeah, I wrestle 200 days a year or whatever it is. It's just I have a pretty wild, wild uh, um, schedule. And so, you know, we choose different ways to relax. And, you know, this is a fun way for me to kind of like do something different and kind of like also test my brain and um, and challenge my brain. I had a fun conversation with, with Shane Douglas today about like, you know, challenging our brains and doing something different. We've all been in wrestling and it's kind of just like, it's just so easy. It's so walk and talk for a lot of us, and it's fun to have that challenge that we that we had maybe when we first started wrestling. Um, it just kind of triggers your brain. So for for me, comedy is kind of like that. It's enjoyable.